Welcome back everybody. Today I am going to talk to you about ways to make passive income and one of my favorites, short-term rentals. Of course, uh, I want to get into why short-term rentals are so much better than long-term rentals and it's more than just the cash flow. So stay tuned for my five reasons that short-term rentals are the way to go. So depending on where you live or if you've encountered long-term renting, uh, as an investment option. Sometimes that happens by accident, whatever it may be. I have a bunch of long-term rentals in Philadelphia. Um, I can tell you firsthand, luckily it hasn't happened to me, but there have been some scares uh, in states where it's really hard to evict people. Uh, long-term rentals are absolutely not the move. You can, you can put up extra screening, you can always pick the right tenant, uh, but it's still a numbers game. Even if you're 99% right, that 1% wrong is gonna be a huge mistake and you can lose a lot of money with a tenant overstaying. So if you're not in a state where evictions are easy, short-term renting can absolutely be a good option for you. Uh, think about it. If someone's in your place, it takes six, eight months to get out. Zero revenue, zero on your bottom line, um, top line really for, for that period, that's really gonna hurt. You're gonna have to carry it. Whereas a bad month with short-term rentals in the slow season, you're going to be in a much better place. Even one or two reservations is is not bad. And there are no markets except for maybe beach markets that you're going to go eight months without a renter. And even then you can you can drum up some action in the off season. But with short term rentals, because the stays are two, three days, maybe a week, you're not going to have to deal with tenants rights. You're not going to have to deal with kicking people out. If anyone overstays, they're welcome, which in 40,000 reservations, I'd say Sometimes people stay a couple hours extra because they're a little late getting out of the house, but I've had maybe a handful of people try to stay an extra day and it's very easy to resolve because they have no rights. You can call the police, you can send someone over there, ask them to leave, whatever the case is, they will be out of there within 24 hours and you do not have to do anything but get the house ready as a normal turnover before you can start making money again. Being able to stay in the market is just as good as anything else in real estate. So make sure you avoid evictions and just try to go with short-term rentals if it's an option for you. So one of the main reasons I got into short-term rentals to begin with is the flexible use of the house. Now with that and the live free movement that I created, the idea is to be able to go live anywhere, enjoy the place, have a really nice experience, experiential place to live and be able to kind of bounce around. And with that, like a lot of times in my market in the Poconos, what people will do is they'll buy a vacation home, one that they've always dreamed of, a place that they can see their family going to stay. It checks all the boxes for what would make sense as a short-term rental as well. And they end up using it two times, three times, five, six times a year. And at that point, they've gotten their experience out of it. But now, instead of carrying the mortgage, all of those other times you're not using it, you get renters in there to offset the cost of your mortgage and make a little extra money. So the flexible use aspect of short-term rentals is super nice. Whereas if you lock someone into a 12 month lease, uh, guess what? You're not going to be going in there other than occasional checkups after giving the tenant notice. With short-term rentals, you have the ability to keep a watchful eye on the property. You're going to have your cleaning team in and out of there regularly. You can go over there as frequently as you want in between turnovers. And a lot of people have this mis misconceived notion that if you're short-term renting, your property is going to get destroyed because, oh, people are throwing parties. People aren't treating it like their own home. They feel like they paid for it. So they're going to do extra damage and use it different. It's actually the opposite with short-term rentals. As long as you screen your guests well, and most guests, of course, you're going to hear the ones on the news that are the bad ones, but 99.9% .9 of guests have good intentions. They're coming to have fun. They're coming to be on vacation. They're going to be relaxed. And with that, you're going to have such a good ability to take care of your place because you're going to have eyes on the property consistently. They're not there long enough to do any real damages. Uh, in my market, we probably have maybe two, three hundred dollars for the claims a month on 700 reservations a month. Whereas the long term renter, people that are in there for 12 months and psychologically start to feel like it's their home, uh, they're going to be hanging stuff up everywhere. They might get rowdy one night and punch a hole in the wall and say, oh, I'll fix that later. They could be super dirty and messy. And when you go in after, you might need to repaint. You, they might've damaged the floors. I've heard so many bad stories about 10, 15, $20,000 for the damage from a long-term tenant. You could screen them too, but again, you, you don't really know. With short-term tenants, the chances that they do anything catastrophic in the tens to 20,000s of dollars over the course of a couple of days is very unlikely. 
And it's also very easy to keep them on the hook because you have so many different insurance layers and assurances and coverage if anything is damaged. So with short-term rentals, the insurance is way easier to deal with if there is something wrong. And it's very unlikely that something's gonna happen compared to what can happen over the course of 12 months in a long-term rental. So the fourth reason that I prefer short-term rentals over any other type of real estate is bad tenants leave eventually. And what I mean by that, and we kind of talked about this with evictions, even, even if you have a horrible person in your house, again, they're not going to do very much over the course of a couple of days. So if you have a hundred reservations and 97 of them are good, well, guess what? Those other three reservations were only in your house for maybe six, six to 10 days. And worst case damage can't be that crazy. Whereas the long-term renter, if just a couple of the tenants over your lifetime are bad tenants, you're, you're just never going to make the money back. The upside is not high enough with long-term rentals to make that back. So even if you have a bad guest, they're really annoying to communicate with. They seem disrespectful. Guess what? Checkout is coming up 10 o'clock. Goodbye. Pack your bags. We're going to get in there clean and welcome someone new who's respectful into the house. We touched on this a little bit already, but dealing with turnover, uh, but we're going to go into a different reason while dealing with turnover is so much better with short term rentals. A lot of people think that because they're more work, you have to schedule the cleaners. There's ways to automate that. You can have systems. Good cleaners will be able to, to work around the schedule and, and get the job done without too much uh, interface with you. Now, the thing is with turnovers on a long term renter, it's a whole saga. You have to go in and see, oh my God, after 12 months, what all do they do? I guarantee you at least something is going to be wrong and you're going to need to send a contractor in right there. You're vacant, you're losing money. You're going to have to wait until the next month to rent it, whatever the case is. On top of that, now you need to list in a bunch of different places. You need to interview different tenants. You need to go through all of the extreme scrutiny to get the right long-term tenant in because there's so much more risk there. And you might have to hire a realtor to fill the gap. You're gonna have to pay. So you're paying for any type of renovations, minor or major. You're paying a realtor to get someone in you're, or you're wasting your own time trying to get a little more money in the door. With short-term rentals, with the way that you can automate the systems, it's so much easier to just never be vacant. I mean, you'll have the normal vacancies between tenants uh, and guests, but you'll stay occupied without having to think about it nearly as often. Once you're set up and you're renting, and you have the right team around you in terms of cleaners and vendors, you're going to be able to just kind of keep it rolling and not ever think about, oh man, my place is empty for months at a time. How am I gonna fix this? Do I, do I have the right rent price? It's so much easier with short-term rentals to make it automatic. And that's why with all of the reasons I just talked about, the flexibility to be able to use it, not dealing with evictions, be able to get in there and check that your property is in tip-top shape uh, every single time, people not leaving damages, not having to deal with finding new people all the time. The systems are just so much better with short-term rentals. And for that reason, if you're looking to live free, short-term rentals are the key to passive income.